Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes for this special 2020 edition of Lessons and Carols. I am Father Jim Ferry, pastor of Our Lady of Lourdes, blessed to serve you here. I encourage you to share this video with family and friends. I am grateful to Linda Chapman, our music director and cantor, and Manny Figueredo, our organist, for making this production possible of Lessons and Carols for 2020. Every year, both our adults and children practice diligently for months for a Christmas concert of Christmas song and Advent song that takes place on this very altar. This year, this is not possible, but through their efforts and the efforts of our lectors, who also are choir members and who represent the whole choir, we present this edition of Lessons and Carols to you. I hope and pray our hearts may be united in prayer and song this Christmas, and that these readings may also remind us of the words of St. Paul who we wrote to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. I hope and pray that we will think about these things, meditate on these things, as we meditate on these beautiful Christmas songs. Merry Christmas to you and to yours. The first lesson is from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. The prophet foretells the coming of the Savior. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who lived in a land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at harvest, as they exult when dividing the spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. Upon David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. So ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. The mystery of the incarnation is proclaimed. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. So ends the second lesson.
The third lesson is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. The angel of the Lord appears to Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy and the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. So ends the third lesson. Thank mm -hmm. you.
The fourth lesson is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. The shepherds go to the manger. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Messiah and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Visit of the Shepherds When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. So ends the fourth lesson.
The fifth lesson is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. The three wise men are led by the star to Bethlehem. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chipperest and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened the treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. So ends the fifth lesson.
In the biblical book of the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah the prophet writes to his people who were in exile, who were in trouble far from home in Babylon. Jeremiah writes, For I know well the plans I have in mind for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare, not for woe, plans to give you a future full of hope. A plan for hope. But it is easy to become discouraged. Here is one personal example of easily becoming discouraged. One night many years ago, I traveled with some friends from New Jersey to New York City for the evening. We intended to come back home that evening. At the end of the evening in New York, we went out for pizza. We brought our slices of pizza back to my friend's car and discovered that his car battery had no life, no charge in it. I was immediately worried, panicked. I had prepared well for panicking in such situations. I remember distinctly my friend saying to me, I'm not going to worry about this car battery right now. I'm going to have my slice of pizza first. I was astonished, shocked that somebody could be so calm in such a situation. We need others around us in order to keep our calm, in order to keep our cool. And there is sometimes a distance between what we would like to be true and what is really true. There's a gap or a distance. In the big city of London, there is a famous announcement to all the travelers on the London Underground or the London subway. It's a warning so that you will not trip and fall in that space between the station platform and the subway train or the subway train and the station platform. That announcement is three famous words, mind the gap, mind the gap. Is there a gap, is there a distance between what we would like to be true and what is really true? There is often a gap, yes. And in this gap, our interior life, our prayer life is important. In 2020, we may feel that we are walking in the gap, in the valley of darkness, as we read in the 23rd Psalm. However, it is in that same valley of darkness, is it not, that the Lord is our shepherd and he comes to help us, comes to feed us. He gives us what we want and gives us what we need and watches over us. In the gap, in this valley, I also ask that we continue to pray for, pray for those whom we know by name, our family and friends, living and deceased, but also pray for those whom we do not know by name. Because when we come to church, we do not know everybody by name here. We only know certain people by sight, certain people by face, by appearance. And I invite you to pray for them. Pray for them by sight, by appearance, by what you remember of them. Describe them, describe that person or that family to God in your prayers. This will bring us closer together at a time of difficulty. It helps us to mind the gap for the benefit of all. I'm grateful for your prayers over these many months. I'm also grateful to many volunteers at Our Lady of Lourdes who have helped to mind the gap, to take care of our church property, to take care of charitable drives we have done for food and clothing, charitable giving we have done to St. John's Soup Kitchen in Newark, to Holy Trinity Soup Kitchen in our own neighborhood, I'm grateful that you have helped to mind the gap. I'm grateful to Linda Chapman and Manny Figueredo who have contributed to the beauty of these masses. Thank you to our religious education volunteers and our religious education staff and our whole parish staff who helped to educate our young people and to prepare them for First Holy Communion and the Sacrament of Confirmation. Through their persevering efforts, we celebrated three First Holy Communion Masses this past July and August, and we celebrated the Sacrament of Confirmation in September, and we are preparing for these sacred moments in 2021 as well. We have minded the gap. I am grateful that you have made Our Lady of Lords a vibrant spiritual community in this time, and I pray the Lord will continue to bless you. This is the priestly blessing of Aaron the priest from the book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord let his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. I pray the blessing of God may be with you always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, pray for us.